Hi, this is Gabe at Spoken. I'm in Ronda, Spain. I'm here riding the Ducati Diavel 1260. This is the 1260 S. This motorcycle's been completely redesigned. They took the 1260 motor from the X Diavel and they've uh, redone the frame, redone a lot of these parts uh, with an eye to more performance, better handling, just to keep the, the overall feel of the, of the Diavel. Now, the Diavel, it's a cruiser style motorcycle. It kind of defies categorization, but what you get is a motorcycle that's very fast. Um, very light for this genre of motorcycle. It's very comfortable. The handling is very, very good. It's got super bike spec uh, suspension and brakes. And I think the uh, base model is starts under $20,000 for the US market. It's a great bike and uh, I'll tell you more about it. This uh, Ducati is a very good partner for Twisty Roads. And I never thought I'd be saying about that, saying that about any cruiser, including the old Diavel. Uh, 1190 which was a great bike similar power but this bike is pretty much all new even though they visually kept it very similar there are a lot of changes um, frame is different subframes different motors different headers exhaust is different uh, different rear tire even uh, different wheels different suspension different brakes you can see that it's a cruiser styled motorcycle but this does not handle like any cruiser. Uh, it, it handles, it's much more like riding maybe a very heavy but well-developed flat track style motorcycle. The weight's very low and the geometry numbers are not as extreme as what you would find on the cruiser. There's plenty of rear suspension travel. The front end is raked, but it's not a severe rake. So it handles much more like a standard bike than you'd think. Of course, it does have these nice wide handlebars, and that's really good for leaning the bike into turns. Look at that. Woo! It's uh, really good suspension. Uh, unlike a lot of other Ducati suspensions I've used or ridden with, it is um, much more compliant, much softer ride than what you're going to get from a Ducati sport bike. The uh, lean angle on this motorcycle is also very impressive, especially for a cruiser. Now, I'm not a super aggressive rider on the street, uh, or on the track for that matter. Not anymore, anyway. But um, even the more, some of the more aggressive uh, journalists were not touching down very frequently. And the pace on the demo ride yesterday was very elevated. Some would say reckless, but not me. So I never thought I would say, you know, I really love this cruiser for its handling, but I really do love this cruiser for its handling. Now you don't feel like you have limitless ground clearance, but it bends into turns and not in a light way. I'm not going to say that it turns, that the steering is light or easy, but it has this wide handlebar and you can really just, uh, it, it gives you a lot of leverage. So it's not a heavy steering effort it just requires a firm touch and it just feels really nice I, I really like riding this bike so the main the heart of any motorcycle is the motor and this motor has the 1260 motor from the x diavel it has uh, what they call uh, ducati variable valve timing that's a system that kind of sits on top of the ooh, almost stepped out the back tire there thanks for the traction control boy i'll tell you it's on a motorcycle like this on a on a cooler day like this 62 degrees where you're really thankful for improvements like uh, traction control when i passed that car back there in the turn um, i had the bike leaned over and i gassed it um you know not expecting it at these speeds for it to uh you know go to spin up the back tire but that's exactly what happened traction control caught me and uh, put me back where I was supposed to be. So it's uh, it's the guardian of idiots like myself. So let's talk more about that motor. Uh, variable valve timing that gives it smoother power. Uh, and uh, although it's actually down on top end power, a couple horsepower, I think it's this is rated at 159 uh, horsepower. Don't know the torque. 
The US models are going to get like uh, 155 or 156, something like that, a little less, and that's uh, because of noise, noise testing standards that US models have to meet. You can only use that top end power, right? I mean, you're not going to be, look at uh, where I am right now and feel how this bike accelerates. And that's in the mid range. And the reason the mid range is so beefy on this bike is because that valve, that variable valve timing, it gave it a lot more torque um, at the lower RPMs where their users are actually using the motorcycles. Uh, Ducati North America's president, Jason Chinook, um, during dinner, one of the things he told me, one of the many things he told me, is that um, the, uh, the DDA system, the, the digital data analyzer system that's built into pretty much every Ducati, it's a two-way system. So Ducati takes that fact, that data from you, I don't know if it's uploaded into the cloud or if they download it during service, but they're taking that, that data from Ducati customers and they're seeing how they're riding their bikes, how, you know, where, where the throttle position is at, at any given RPM or at any given speed, seeing how their riders accelerate, how they're, where they're shifting and how they're using their bikes. Based on that data, uh, they, they, they're giving their customers more usable power rather than that top end power that sounds good on the uh, spec sheets. This uh, motorcycle also has a new exhaust system, probably also uh, aimed at giving it more mid-range power. And I think it sounds pretty good. You can hear it. I mean, it's not going to be loud. They can't make it loud. But it gives you a good satisfying kind of uh, you know, rumbly, you know, V-twin, but very distinctive also with the Ducati way, the kind of higher pitched, uh, sharper sound. A lot of motorcycles on this road. I'm a wave. Tires, the front tire is a regular decent sport bike size tire. The rear tire is that uh, 240 section, the 55 profile, 17 inch, just like the front. I'm actually rolling on very early production Diablo Rosso 3s as opposed to the Diablo Rosso 2 that was on the previous model. I don't know how the 3 is different from the 2. What I do know is that the uh, that these are very early production so you can see the, the lines between the layers of rubber as they were building them up. You can change the uh, mode, the engine mapping while you're riding show you how that works. So you can change from sport to urban. I'm going to leave it in touring because I like that. Um, I like the dash layout in touring. It gives you more information. If you change the dash layout to sport, um, you, some of that information goes away. It makes the speedometer, it makes the tachometer more prominent. In the United States, it's going to be 23,000 for the 1260S, the standard 1260 with a 50 millimeter Marzocchi fork. Um, and uh, the lower spec Brembo brakes, but you still get all the traction control and other electronic stuff that this bike has. And that's going to be on just a hair under $20,000. You know, the main thing I'm going to talk about is just kind of these subjective feelings of how, what it's like to ride. And it's just really fun. You can go as fast as you want. You can also just put it in a lower gear or a higher gear and just cruise along. The, uh, the ABS and the traction control, which now has saved me from crashing twice in two days, works extremely well, which you should expect from a motorcycle as advanced and safety conscious as Ducati. It's also very comfortable. Um, there's a nice reach to the bars. I like the reach to the bars. Um, my knees are a little more bent because the pegs are a little higher. You know, the, the seat bar foot peg triangle is definitely not what you're going to find on a sport bike or even a standard. It's going to be a much more compact position. So I'm a small guy with a 30 inch inseam, five foot six. I find it comfortable, but um, after all of about three hours in the saddle yesterday, <coughs> I did start experiencing some, some pain in the seat and my knees. So maybe as a as a dedicated long distance touring mount, I wouldn't recommend this bike. They do sell windshield and bags, and they look really nice, but they're small bags, and um, 
But again, uh, especially as a two-up tourer, I, I don't think this is going to make it. But as a motorcycle that is fun to ride every day and makes you want to ride, which I think is just the test of a good motorcycle, you know, I really want to get out and ride this bike. I, it's fun. It's fun. It's responsive. It does everything right. I really like this motorcycle. I think you would like it too if you gave it a test ride. Thanks a lot for watching my video.